is up it's your girl Becky and I'm back to do another sketch in this garden park area it is a pretty warm day in Hong Kong currently it's about 24 degrees Celsius although spring happened about two months ago the flowers are now in full bloom because we had a pretty cold spring and the flowers are out everywhere so I thought I would try and sketch them I know they're not my forte but I just really wanted to capture this moment in time where all the flowers are around me and they're just beautifully blooming. Just from this quick view alone, there's just so many flowers all around and I'm kind of bummed because I don't have opera in my palette, which now I think I should just add it in because all these flowers are really bright pink and they just really, really pop. So I am hoping to be able to capture some of these brightness and at the same time if not I'll just have to come back with a more suitable palette. I am currently perched on this little bench right here which gives me a really nice view of this flower bed and I am going to sketch this. My supplies are largely the same they sit in this front pocket as usual I learned from my mistake and I am bringing a pencil now because I want to try and shift away from ink to get some of these softer edges of watercolor. I've got my sketchbook right here and I have my watercolor kit right here. This is an overview of the supplies I'm going to be using today. Everything is compact just the way I like it. gonna start off with a very light pencil sketch. I did not bring an eraser so whatever happens in this sketch happens. I mean there is an eraser here but I would rather not have to go back and forth within some details. Okay I'm gonna, gonna place some of the flowers here. Kind of don't want them to have like a hard edge because I would rather develop that with watercolors. Let's see. Get the rough shape. It goes down a little bit here. This one also coincidentally does that. And I'm going to place the tree bark on the back here for composition. I just don't want it to be in the center because it splits the page into left and right. So slightly to the left and I know there's a few stuff going on in the background but I'm gonna blur it all together because I don't want the forms to distract from my main focus which is the flowers. Now that this is done, I'm gonna cap this, I'm gonna bring out my watercolors. There you go. Miss them a little bit. I'm gonna use this one water brush. Nothing more. All right. I swear I've done this so many times, but I'm always very confused as to where to put my palette. Okay, so I'm going to start with... Oh my gosh, it's warm. It's getting warmer. I think this is why you don't go out midday. It's about... Uh, it's close to 12 noon here where I am. And I should have gone a lot earlier, but I didn't, so that's on me. Um, this guy today is a little bit gray. Let's see if I can dull it down a little bit. I'm just going to use a ton of water. Cool. Yeah, if I dilute that enough, that should work. All right, there we go. We settle on a placement. Bravo. Okay. Just so make sure you guys are on camera at all times. It's these kind of times where I really do wish I had like a really big flat brush. But there's really only one use for that flat brush is to to wash in these big areas and then most of the time I do like this size a lot. Okay, I'm not gonna color in that 
tree trunk there. Oh, look at how warm the day is. These colors just dry instantly. And I know they're a little bit streaky. But we will work with what we have. Okay. At least they're bright. I hope they do dry a little bit lighter. Then I'm going to start with the bottom. Gonna make a really bright pale peach color. Surely a little bit of purple wouldn't hurt. Mm, that's just brown. Let's see if I can make it a little bit purple. So these two colors that I'm using, I believe they are Prussian blue and magenta. They are incredibly strong. So I do only have like the tiniest, like the, the smallest pan for them to be in because I really don't need them to be any darker. Oh, sorry, any, I don't need a lot of them. I just usually use like the tiniest drop. Okay, this is really tricky because the light changes. The clouds keep going past and then these um, this comes in light and then in shadow and it comes in light again, but I guess that's what happens in plein air So funny to see the runners because that is also what I do I run in this exact same track And I kind of want to be like you go girl or like you go dude or you go You got it because they really do got it, but it sometimes just feels really tiring. Okay. Now I'm gonna start with the flowers. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Let's see if I put in like white, does it make it pinker? Kind of, but it's not as pink as I want it to be. I really need to bring out my opera. I know opera is always like such a hard color and people always say like, oh, it's not a light fast color. But, you know, this stuff is gonna live in my sketchbook. And honestly, it will mostly be visible on my Instagram feed and there is no light fastness in Instagram. There's no light fastness in YouTube because you guys are, this is going to be up forever unless YouTube one day gets taken down. Which, not impossible, but also likelihood is small. Okay. I'm just thinking if I want to go switch out Opera, I'll probably like downsize this green. Because I don't. I use it, but it's barely any use of this pan, even though I use it a lot. At the end of this year, or after a few months, this palette is just going to be like comprised of mini pans because I just don't use any color up so much that it warrants a full pan. I honestly th started off with all these um, full long rectangular pans and then just slowly but surely I just kept like chipping away. Alright, okay, now well, we're gonna switch off to the green color of the hour. Um, so, yeah, I think you guys can see that I don't even wipe off my brush. I'm not obsessed with getting um, clean colors. I think mainly because mainly because the colors, if they're mixed together, they're wonderfully muted and there's some sort of color harmony that I like that emerges out of these colors. So I'm not too fussed about keeping 
a clean brush and plus this is also a water brush so maybe that's part of it it's that with every stroke i actually hardly press this thing unless in the beginning i'm just trying to create a really watered down wash but i have used this brush long enough to know the frequent no not the frequency the flow of the brush or the flow of the water that comes out of this brush so these are just getting placed really randomly but i'm trying to make sure that they're in the bottom of these pink blobs and that way it really shows that the flowers sit on top of the leaves i actually don't know what to, how to fill in these white spaces just realized if this was gouache i would have filled in the dark places first and then put the white on top but because this is watercolor, we need to kind of work in reverse. And I know that I have white gouache here, but I do really like the transparent to opaque approach of watercolor. And I try to hone in that even with my gouache paintings as well. So see these these ones in the top I quite like because at least they can emerge on the sky and they are not purely pink on top of white or green on top of white. For these other places though, I need to figure it out. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna start in with or brown so here I'm just mixing blue and orange I need to look up what exactly the names of these are I'm just trying to dot them in places there's not much of a structure to this really Just trying to keep it to the general shape. Yeah, so these stitches, sometimes you gotta be careful because they do bleed to all the other pages that has um, these stitches, especially if you're doing like really heavy watercolor washes. And there's something that you really need to keep transparent, but I largely ignore them. I just think it's part of the sketchbook. Okay, I'm gonna put in that tree trunk as well. Oh, that is a light wash. Yeah, water brushes tend to give that if you spread the nylon i think this is nylon the nylon bristles brighter i actually think this used to be white as well i guess i've used it enough for it to change color okay I'm gonna create a little bit more Ooh, that was very jelly like a little bit more purple down here and a little bit of brown so i'm just gonna throw in that orange in there let's try to use this as a shadow color oh my god that is such a strong shape okay let me try to do this break it up a little bit I'm trying to paint around all these shapes which i know it's a bit impossible but always worth a shot I'm just letting the pigment kind of wash 
or brush off my water brush so it does get lighter and then I'm going to switch over to a green I'm gonna add in a little bit more yellow because they're closer to the top they have a little bit more exposure to the Sun and this even though it seems strong will not dry as strongly So I do know this is like a little bit of a weird blob of a shape. Let's figure out how to unify those shapes later. But currently I'm just trying to fill in as much of these white spaces as I see them with these green. And I think maybe I'll, I'll come over the top with white gouache and that red to really solidify that pink and make it pop yeah that's probably what i'm gonna do okay it's not bad a lot busier than i thought it was gonna be but that's all right okay let me squish out some water here let's get as much red as we can wonder if I darker I go yes oh my god yes 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 oh it's not as bright as I thought it would be it looks so good on the palette I thought it was gonna I thought it was gonna be even brighter I think the thing with um, doing this technique with white gouache is that the more gouache I put in the more the color loses saturation which is not what I want I think the minute I add opera to my to my paint I'm gonna go crazy with it and I'm just gonna use it for every single painting or something which I know it's been like kind of a cult favorite within warrior painters like everyone freaking loves opera and i can see why though it really pops okay so i'm just gonna add in some details on the flower i'm just gonna add in a little bit more white or a lot more white just gonna try and dot it in i don't know how it will look after it dries let me just add a lot more white oh no that's too white ah hmm But I do know these whites are going to dry a little bit darker. Okay, I'm just trying to dot it on the top corners. Okay, I'm, I'm alright. I'm, I'm happy enough with this thing. So I am going to make this really pale I just completely demolished my palette there is no care in the world with how dirty the palette can be mainly also because like once you touch it it's just like this dirty palette it just stays on top of the watercolor you guys like it does not contaminate the lower layers so I'm not too much of a stickler as to how pure and clean it must be and also it's just more much more fun that way if you're just able to block in colors as quickly as you do with watercolors it's just, ugh, the best it's the best okay just adding in another layer of purple gosh i'm starting to sweat it is hot today you guys like it was 15 degrees yesterday 16 maybe i was wearing like sweatshirts and sweatpants so i thought it was going to be warm today hence the black jeans big mistake i should not have done that because it is really freaking warm okay wow that is too blue oh my god that is too purple oh god that is very saturated how do i tone it on ah yellow Okay. Yes, yes. Mm, okay, fine. Okay. 
just gonna drop in some. No, it's super busy. I'm just kind of randomly dotting it at places where I see it's a little bit wide and empty. I try to keep it to the general shape as well, where I see if there's like a flower up there, then I'll try to connect it with the stems, get some color on my fingers. That's a lot. No big deal. All right. Okay, let's see. Oh, I kind of want to get in the shape of these tiles, these bricks. Let's see, I'm just gonna dot it here. Hmm, it's a bit too extreme of a perspective, but. I don't know about you guys, but I like really love making these shapes and just stamping on shapes with my water brush or with like a flat brush it's like one of my favorite things ever i don't know why i think it's just satisfying to make like a straight line with just one stroke as opposed to having to like carefully draw it in also because if you see my previous videos i am horrible at making straight lines like, it is not my thing at all. I could use a ruler and everything. Don't want to bring ruler outdoors. I think it's unnecessary. So if there's a hack to do it with like the flat brush, I will do it. Okay, wait. Okay, I'm just now glazing, well, as, as best as I can, this side of the shadow Mm, glazing is basically you're covering like a whole area with like a really thin watered down layer but the problem is with water brushes and this tiny brush i can't really control it okay Let's see what else i can do kind of want to add it dry brushing is also really hard with intentionally I intentionally wanted to dry brush this. It's not coming the way I want it to. That's fine. Oh, there is a petal down here, which I will try to get. One day I will keep all my mixes separate, guys. Today is not the day. Let's see, some of the petals have dropped, so I just wanted to to indicate that here it's a bit of a random some of it has like dried and become like this dark color Let's see what colors build up there cool um let's see what else to add should i add in the brick lines let me do that with pencil actually why not i've got a pencil Okay, I'm just gonna brush this off. This is really opaque coming at the end. Mm. Close this. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Let's put you to work. Oh, it's hardly visible. Can you guys even see that line? Oh, whatever. It's not straight! Whatever. I'm gonna... Just gonna add these in. Thankfully, these lines do not correspond necessarily with like none of them line up with each other so I don't mind doing this it's 
content is a bit wonky. Can I erase this? No? Oh my god, this is like a totally useless pencil. So I thought theoretically, graphite is supposed to sit on top of paint because the paint gets absorbed to the paper. Oh, kind of. Let's see. No, nah, not bad. We're done. That is going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me again for another sketch venture slash plein air attempt. If you want to know or if you want to see more videos that are similar to this, I do have a couple of videos already uh, walking through the real time process as well with pen, with ink and wash. I guess this one is watercolor without any outlines, roughly no pen outlines at least. And I have a few more coming that I'm excited to take you guys to. Actually, I don't know where to go yet, but there's a lot of Hong Kong places that I still want to explore. And I will definitely try to document them in my sketchbook. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you guys are also doing Plan April. I would love to be able to cheer you on and we can have like this little hustling going on within the community. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel because it really helps support the channel if you do that. And it means so much to me if you choose to be notified of new uploads. See you guys at the next sketch venture. Bye!